We're just gonna paste some very flowery GPT text here and boom, instant cleaned up pros here. Let me show you how to do this. This is the power of fine tuned models. There is so much that we can do here. Let's get into it. What's up everybody. Today we are talking about fine tuned models. One of my favorite subjects going into 2024. I believe this is the real future of writing with AI. It's not GPT-5. It's not Claude 3. It's none of these open source models. It's taking what those models give us and then fine tuning it to something very specific. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through what fine tuned models are, what some good use cases of fine tuned models might look like, and actually how you can get your hands on a fine tuned model today that I have specifically crafted to do some pretty cool things. From what I have already seen with fine tuned models with even a simple model like GPT 3.5, which, you know, we've all kind of forgotten about GPT 3.5, right? Like it's not really something that's that important to most of us anymore, but I've seen fine-tuned models in GPT 3.5 outperform the best of the higher end models uh, when it comes to writing fictional prose. For example, Claude 2 is generally considered to be the one with the best natural sounding prose. A good fine tuned model can blow Claude 2 out of the water. And this is now my favorite way to actually produce finished prose. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on with fine tuned models. And before we do that, I, I want to talk a little bit about all of the different ways of achieving results with AI. The first is, of course, prompting, prompt engineering. And that's really what much of this channel has been devoted to so far. How can you change your prompt, use specific words to kind of get a more desirable output from AI? And that's fine, but it often doesn't work or it doesn't work well enough. And so there's a second method of prompting called retrieval augmented generation or RAG. Uh, and all this really does is it allows the AI to access more information. So you'll see modern GPTs that are built up in chat GPT. Those are using a RAG system. If you have like files that you want to add to the GPT so it can reference those files as like a database of a whole bunch of information and a lot of chat bots that you'll see on people's websites that are supposedly trained on the data that that website has in most cases they're not actually trained on that data it's instead it's just a rag setup so it has that information available and when it needs to it can go and retrieve that information but it's not perfect and it really isn't that much better than prompting at getting something that you want fine tuning is a little bit different fine tuning is not going to feed it extra facts or anything like that. It's not really how fine tuning works. If you want to give it more of a database, you give it the, you go the rag method, but fine tuning is a way of really changing the style. And for fiction authors and nonfiction authors, for that matter, fine tuning is, I would say the number one way to get a style that you like, that sounds like you or sounds like whoever you want to sound like, right? But there's a problem with fine tuning and that is that it is really kind of inaccessible right now. It's not something that most authors ha have the ability to access. Even though it is available to anyone, you kind of have to have some technical know-how on how to do this. I'm gonna break down what fine tuning looks like and what you actually have to do to create a fine tuned model because it involves actually quite a bit of work on your end if you don't have a couple of shortcuts in place, which often you really can't get around the shortcuts. You have to do a lot of work to create some of these models and that's not even counting the technical side of things. So here's what fine tuning looks like. When you fine tune a model, basically all you're trying to do is show the AI a prompt and then a desired response. So what you do is you give it 50 to 100 of these examples of what an ideal prompt and an ideal response looks like. So for instance, we could have a prompt saying, I want you to edit this text and then you give it the text and then you give it an example of what the edited text would look like. Okay, that way it kind of realizes, oh, okay, here are the relationships between the old text and the new text. I can kind of study this and learn the mathematical relationships between the two. And as you give it more examples, it gets a better idea of 
what it should look like. And then you can just give it text. And because it's been trained on all of these examples, it will most likely do a good job actually performing the output that you want it to. So here's a good example of what I think most of us would like to have, right? Most of us would like to have a fine-tuned model trained on our data that creates pros out of a beat that you might get it. So you give it a beat, or in other words, a small description of the next thing that should happen in the scene, and then it gives you a couple of paragraphs, you know, five, 600 words or so with the action from that beat. So here's what that would look like. With, with fine-tuned models, there are really three components. There's the system prompt, and for this, a system prompt would look kind of like a normal prompt that you would expect. And you'd say you are a, and then you put it, your genre here that you write in, writer, Jason Hamilton in my case. Each time I prompt you with a scene beat, write 500 words based on the idea. Start in media res with action, follow the beat instructions closely, avoid concluding the scene on your own, avoid foreshadowing, right? So this is giving it an example beat. And usually when you're creating a data set, you want the the this part of it, the system part, to be the same every single time because we are training a fine-tuned model to do one specific action. That's an important thing about fine-tuned models. You don't create them. You don't just throw all your books at them and expect it to really understand what your writing style is like. Instead, you want to have a fine-tuned model trained on one specific action that you want it to take. In this case, taking a, a single beat and developing it into prose. So what you would do is you want to give it examples of the beat and the prose that you would get from that beat. So one of the ways you could do this, you would put the beat here under user and you would put the example of what would be written in your style here under assistant. So what I would do in this case to create this data set is I would take 500 words of my book, paste it here under assistant, and then I would manually write out a beat that describes those 500 words. Do you see? So we're kind of working backwards here. We start with the finished prose because we already have that written, assuming you do have books written. And then you go backwards and write the beat that should go here. And then you have one piece of your data set, right? You have the prompt, the example of the beat, and the example of the output that you would like the AI to have based on that beat. You then repeat this process 50 to 100 times. Remember I told you that this takes a lot of work to fine tune a model and a lot of work to actually create the data set and the actual file that you use to upload to the AI. So you go system, user, assistant, and you repeat that process over and over and over until you have 50 to 100 examples. Here is another example of a different fine tune model that you might wanna use. The system prompt might look something like, you are an expert copy editor. When given prose, return copy edited prose that stays within the style of Jason Hamilton. The purpose of this fine tuned model is to basically take text that is AI written and not really good. You know, AI written stuff can often be too flowery. It can just not be good enough, right? And turn it into something that sounds more like your style and maybe cut through some of the fluff, make it sound a little more natural, all of that sort of thing. This is actually a very useful fine-tuned model to have and one that you definitely would want to create. And so here you would put the example of the bad text, so text that the AI created. And then here in the assistant, you would put the, an example of edited text, text the way you would write it. So you could actually get some GPT text and then edit it to your specification and then you have one piece of the puzzle here and then you repeat that 50 to 100 times to get your full data set or you could work back or backwards again take a piece of your writing something that you actually wrote run it through gpt4 and say write this in your style so it does basically a bad job of writing your book and then you paste that here on the under the user so it sees the bad version and then it sees your good version and says oh okay here is how I would change that to be more like that. You see what I'm saying here? And then once this has been fine-tuned and you've generated your model, any AI text that you give it, it will edit to sound more like you. Really powerful stuff. And this example that I started with here, this is exactly what that did. 
So the pr the prompt here is basically what we just saw. You are an expert copy editor. When given prose, return copy edited prose that stays within the style of Jason Hamilton, right? And then here under the user, I added some GPT written prose, okay? Which uh, I intentionally asked to be over the top, flowery, very GPT-ish written, okay? Uh, let's just read a little bit. In a realm where the verdant embrace of spring perennially flourished, Young Mary, a maiden whose hair shimmered like threads of spun gold under the benevolent gaze of the sun, meandered through the daisy-speckled meadows. Okay, very over-the-top, very GPT-like, excessively GPT-like. And then over here, you can see I have picked a fine-tuned model. This fine-tuned model, model was something I created with a little help from a member of my community because there's some technical aspects that I'm still working on. But I was able to take this, run it, and now from this huge block of text, you could say it trimmed it down quite a bit and because it's now in my style. Uh, it says, in a place where spring bloomed every year, Mary, a young girl with hair like spun gold, led a lamb through the fields of daisies. Way more natural sounding, way more like me, and just cutting through the fluff, making it sound just ah, so much better, so much better. And if we go to Novel Crafter, this isn't meant to be a tutorial of Novel Crafter. I can do that at a later date. But one of the cool things about Novel Crafter is you can actually take those fine-tuned models that you've already created and plug them into Novel Crafter. And then I've created here a button that says, make it JSON, okay? And all that does is it runs the fine-tuned model and boom, it edits it exactly like I would want. In a realm that was always spring, Mary wandered through the fields, a lamb by her side. The lamb was as white as her own hair, and its wool seemed to dance in the sunlight. You know, very, very much in my kind of style, much more to the point and cutting through all the fluff. So that's one of the nice things about Novel Crafter, but this really is just using the fine-tune model that we've already created here in OpenAI. Now there is a problem with fine-tuning, and the first of them is like you have to have all of that information, that huge data set that we talked about, placed into one JSON file, J-S-O-N. And JSON files are then, if you come here into this fine tuning section of OpenAI's platform, you drag and drop them here, and then you have to create the file from there. You select the model, which in this case is GPT 3.5 Turbo 1106, that's the one we want, and you move on from there. But the problem is getting it to that JSON file. That's the issue that I had is getting it to that point. There are tools out there that will make it work, but they often cost a lot of money. I'm working actually right now with the folks of Novel Crafter to, to try and find a more accessible solution. But ultimately, it's not really an easy thing to do. And so I thought, why don't I actually take this model here that I used and make that specific model, that actual file that I created, accessible to the masses. And so that is actually what I've done. And with that said, I would like to announce that my membership is open again. If you've been waiting for to learn more about AI and to join my membership and my community, I'm happy to let you know all about it right now. Firstly, I just moved it to this new platform and it is gorgeous. There's so much that I can do here that I'll get to in a second. But the main thing you need to know about is the freebies. These are all things that you will get immediately upon joining. Even if you haven't actually started paying yet, there's a 14 day free trial. You can come in and get these right from the bat. The first of these is a link to download that fine tune model that has been specifically crafted to make GPT written text a lot easier to read basically and much more natural sounding and along with that you get a couple of videos totally explaining the entire process of how to upload this file to your account which should be a pretty seamless thing if you follow my instructions here additionally you get access to my 10,000 words an hour book which is my book about how to write a book with ai and everything all of the basics everything you need to know about writing with ai as well as my book, From Zero to Published, which is a book about how to self-publish your book. It's basically how do you go from having nothing to actually having something without an email list and all those things. And there are also a couple of other bonuses that you get here. My book in a day system, how to create a book cover in mid-journey, 
all of my prompts from my books, as well as the prompts from the YouTube channel. All of these are freebies that you get absolutely for free upon uh, immediately upon entering into the membership. Beyond that, there's a Facebook group that you can join. And I really love the Facebook groups in paid memberships like this because you're rubbing shoulders with people that are genuinely serious about things. And that's always really good to know. Plus, you have my AI Foundations course, which walks you through everything you need to know about AI as it currently stands. Of course, you get your freebies here. And then you have this is I'm really excited about the success path which has multiple phases, which are still ongoing. We got three of them here. There's going to be five eventually. Each one of these will walk you through the entire process of writing a book from scratch. So if you have nothing, by the end of these phases, you will not only have a book, but you'll have a short story. You'll have an email list with people on your list. I'll show you exactly what you need to do to get there. And you'll have the book published on Amazon, as well as anywhere else that you want to publish it. And you'll have all of the marketing tools that you need to be able to actually start earning money from those books. You'll also get the Build a Business with Me, which is just a series of videos I'm doing. It's almost like a second YouTube channel where I'm running through my process as I build a business myself. You'll get some videos as I sort of document that journey. And you'll also get a members-only podcast, which is a podcast just for members that'll have some bonus materials from it. It'll have audio from certain episodes of the YouTube channel and a whole bunch of other stuff here inside the membership. But the big thing is that fine-tuned model. I really think people are gonna love it and you can get that by joining the membership today. It costs you nothing upfront, free 14-day trial you can get in. Get your toes wet, see if you like it, and of course get that fine-tuned model so you can dive into that and see what that's all like. To sign up, go ahead and just click the link below, and I hope to see you there.